instrument pilots in the United States have a choice of charts. Use the ones from the government or pay extra for Jefferson charts. Let's take a look at what we get for the extra money. In 2020, I began flying a Cirrus in a flying club here in Iowa. That Cirrus has the Avidyne Integra avionics system, which includes Jeppesen approach charts shown on the large multifunction display, the MFD. And I must say, I've gotten to like those charts. So when the navigation database for the Avidyne IFDs in my Bonanza was up for renewal recently, I spent the extra money on including Jeppesen charts. And that subscription not just shows the Jefferson charts on my IFD, but also lets me bring them up on my iPad, running ForeFlight, or the IFD 100 app. So why spend more money if you can legally fly with the government charts? Well, for starters, the government charts are only available for public use airports and only in the United States. If you fly internationally at all, only Jefferson covers every IFR airport in the world in a consistent format. But even if you're flying exclusively in the US, there are a few differentiators you may find interesting. If you look at the airport diagram from my home airport, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, you can see it combines information from a variety of sources. A summary of airport remarks from the chart supplement book, Runway and approach light information for the whole airport, for which I'd otherwise have to look at multiple separate approach charts or the chart supplement. Takeoff minimums and alternate minimums, which are published in a different section of the Government Approach Procedures book. And obstacle notes and obstacle departure procedures, which the government puts in yet another section of their Approach Procedures publication. Jefferson combines this all in one place, and that's very practical. I also think that the radio frequencies are easier to read on the Jefferson charts. Moving on to approach charts. Here's an example from Boeing Field in Seattle, Washington. At the top of the chart is the briefing strip, a term Jefferson has coined and actually trademarked. It has the most important bits and pieces of information all in one place, which should be reviewed in the approach briefing. Looking at the plan view, the one from Jefferson looks a little cleaner, maybe due to the FAA's attempt to depict every single obstacle instead of just the most relevant ones. You can see that the names of the waypoints are much easier to spot on the Jefferson chart. A couple of other things I like. ILS and VOR frequency boxes have completely different shapes on the Jefferson chart, making it less likely to accidentally tune a VOR when you want to tune an ILS, like that ever happened to me, right? And a localizer back course isn't just shaded on the other side, like the government chart, but it's shaded in solid black. There's no way I could miss that on the Jefferson chart. Below the plan view, in the vertical profile, the first thing you notice is that Jefferson uses the full width of the chart, instead of carving out space for the miniature airport diagram. I do like the little airport overview, but there's no question that the profile depiction benefits from the additional space. Again, waypoint names stick out clearly. And one thing I always found out on the government charts is that they draw just one single vertical path for approaches with and without vertical guidance. And that simply does not reflect how differently these approaches are flown, whether you have or don't have vertical guidance. On a Jefferson chart, there's an additional dashed line to show the descent profile if the approach is flown without vertical guidance, including leveling off when there are step down fixes, and it also more clearly depicts the missed approach point. Below the profile view is the minimums table, and while they both have the same information, because minimums are minimums, they are arranged differently, like swapping the rows and columns of a table. More importantly though, when we deal with broken approach lights or we don't have the local weather, we find instructions at the top of the government charts on how to increase the minimums. Jefferson just prints the increased minimums on the chart, so we don't need to do any math. You will also notice that Jefferson does not have the military minimums in this table, nor do they show military radio frequencies at the top, which keeps things simple. 
the charts that have timing data for the final approach segment, you'll see Jeppesen and the government both use a table, but they differ in the selection of ground speeds. The government charts have pretty big jumps of 30 knots from one speed to the next, and Jeppesen offers finer steps here. Another example of how Jeppesen tries to make things a little easier is for the vertical climb gradient on an instrument departure, like here in Aspen. 465 feet per nautical mile are required, but Jeppesen also includes a table of what that means in feet per minute for different ground speeds. After all, a vertical speed indicator in the cockpit shows feet per minute, not feet per mile. One thing I saw where I thought the government chart was a little better can be seen here on this approach with a DME arc, where Jeppesen has scaled the chart such that the initial approach fixes on the arc fell off the chart. And sure, we don't fly DME arcs as much these days as we used to, but on instrument training flights they still happen regularly. Finally, let's take a look at the en-route charts that come with Jeppesen subscription. Forflight, of course, can display the sectional and en-route charts, but those are simply digital versions of printed charts and you can scale them by pinch zooming on the iPad screen, but it's the same information, just larger or smaller. Compare that against Jeppesen's en-route charts, which dynamically change their content to produce something that's readable and useful at any scale. So, those are the things I've noticed so far. Adding JEP charts adds between $150 and $200 to the yearly database subscription price of a US database, depending a bit on the exact plan or bundle, of course. I have the next 12 months to try things out, both on the iPad and on my Aberdyne IFD, and then I'll decide whether to keep the JEP charts going forward or save the money. And of course, you'll see the Jeppesen charts here on flights on my channel this year. Thanks for watching, and a special thank you to the first three new patrons of 2021 Brian, Julio, and Rene, and of course, to the other patrons who helped make these videos possible. Fly safe and see you all soon.